Hey everyone, I'm Mark and today we're going to have a quick look at the bindings for Microsoft Flight Sim 2024 as well as look at some issues that I ran into with workarounds and also some things that I just couldn't quite resolve. The best way that I found to test all of your bindings and make sure that everything's working is to actually go into free flight. From here, you can pick any airport. It really doesn't matter which one. Just make sure that you're starting on the runway because like that, the airplane is going to start running and it'll make it a whole lot easier for you to focus just on the controls and not have to worry about starting the airplane up first to be able to check everything out properly. Now, if you had 2020, one thing that can be useful, which I did, is to actually load up both sims at the same time and compare the bindings from one to the other because the names are often very similar. One other way to do it is to also just take a screenshot, which is actually what I did, and then you can easily open it up to be able to compare and find things that you can't necessarily remember what they're called. You can access the control bindings from the option that's right here in the little toolbar. However, the only thing to be aware of is that from here, you can't actually clear any bindings that are already set up. So for that reason, I end up not even using this one at all. And instead, I'll go into the pause menu by pressing escape and then I'll go into settings. And finally, we'll go into controls. From here, there are basically three main sections. The first is our device list that's on the left, and that's literally just everything that you have connected to your computer. On the right, you have all of the different categories of bindings, and when you click through on something, you can actually see those bindings listed here. And then finally, in the bottom left, we have a bunch of preset configurations, and there's actually three separate groups of controls here. All of the bindings are already assigned to one of the different control groups, either general, airplane, or specific controls. So for example, the flight instruments that we have here, you can see it's written airplanes, which means that anytime you set a binding for one of these, it's going to save that binding as part of an airplane control. Things like camera views, looking around, all that type of stuff is going to go into the general controls. And then in the airplane controls, you'll get everything related to flying the airplane. And then finally, in the specific controls, you would have anything that's been set up specifically for that airplane. However, in all of the searching that I've looked through all of the bindings, I haven't found anything that actually uses specific controls yet. This basically creates three tiers of control bindings and it gives you more flexibility since the stuff that's common across all airplane types like camera bindings only needs to be done once and they can be shared across the same general control preset for all airplanes. On the other hand, things like the throttle, the reverse, and anything else like that is going to be quite different from a C-172 through to an airliner, which is why those things are grouped together under the airplane control presets instead. Those airplane control presets are really where you have to decide how you want to organize your controls, and there are two different approaches that you can take. The first is to make separate presets for each airplane, so you'd have a vision jet control, C-172 controls, and so on. But the other approach, which is what I've decided to go with for now, is to create one profile per airplane type. So I've created a single engine prop preset, a two engine prop preset, a turbo prop preset, and so on, especially for controls like the throttle quadrant, where it's going to be different for each airplane. That'll make it fairly easy to jump into any type of plane rather quickly because I can just reuse one of my existing presets and when the need arises, I can duplicate that preset and then further refine it for a given type of airplane. When it comes time to assigning bindings, I find looking through the list and the categories of everything to be a little bit time consuming. So I usually end up searching for it by name and I can use the filter at the top to do that. And we'll start with a simple case for now. We're just going to reassign the arrow keys to move us around the cockpit. One thing that is important to check, though, is the filter option that's at the bottom here. If you have it set to assigned or essential, you might not find the binding you're looking for if it's not assigned already. So in that case, you would want to make sure that you're set on to none. But when you know something's already assigned to those keys, you can use the assign drop down. It'll definitely make that list a little bit smaller to look at. 
In our case, I know that I'm looking for the translate options because that's what they were called in 2020. And we can see them right here. They're assigned to Shift S, W, A, and D. And I want to reassign all of those. So the first thing that I'll actually have to do is remove those bindings. So all I'll do is highlight the entry that I want to remove the binding for, press the backspace key, and now that's gonna bring up a menu where you have to enter a name for what your new profile is gonna be. And you'll wanna call this something generic, especially for the keyboard like we're looking at now, because it's unlikely that you'll have different settings for each airplane. I'll call it general sim for now, and I'll press okay on that. And now you can see in the control section here, it's now set to general sim. So this is what's now being applied to my airplane. And the other thing that you can do, especially for the keyboard to save yourself some time, is to click on the gear icon here and press apply to all aircraft, which will apply this control setting to all of the airplanes in the sim. I'll just remove all of the other bindings very quickly with the backspace key. And now you can see they're all gone because I have the filter set to assign. So I'll switch it back to none. And we have our translate keys back showing up here. So now we can go about rebinding them. For me personally, I like to use the arrow keys for moving around the cockpit. So all you gotta do to set up an assignment is click on the entry. Do not move your mouse because that's going to cancel the scanning press the key that you want. So in this case, I want to go backwards and then it's going to automatically set your binding to whatever you pressed on the keyboard. I'll do the exact same thing for the other ones. So forward again, I press on the button, I press up and I can assign it. And then I'll do the exact same things for left and right as well. Now, binding a switch is a little bit harder to do than just a plain button. So if we switch over to the Bravo throttle settings now, I'll show you how to set up the nav light switch. And like that, you'll be able to reproduce it for any other switch that you want to set up. Now, I've already created an airplane's control profile here, but this is exactly like what we just looked at. So what I'll do now is search for the nav lights that I want to set up. Just type in nav. And we can see we already have our nav lights on and off already bound here. So I'll just unbind them so we can redo it together. All right, so you have to do this in the right order. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure that our nav light switch is in the off position, which it is. And what we'll do is we'll click on the nav lights on binding right here. We'll switch the nav lights button on and we're going to bring it back to off right after so that it sets our binding for us. If you didn't set it back to off like I just did there, it would end up canceling the scan and it won't take your binding. So you really have to make sure to flip it on and then back to off. Now to do the opposite, we actually have to do something first on the Bravo. So we're actually going to set the nav light switch to the on position. And like this, when we go to bind it, it's going to pick up the button for the nav lights off. So now that I've done that, we can press on the nav lights off. I'll turn the nav lights off and again, turn them back on. And there we go. My bindings all set up. I'll admit this is a little bit counterintuitive and it took me a little bit of time to figure out, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not that bad. For each binding, you can tweak a couple of things by pressing on the gear icon and most notably for an axis, this is where you would come to invert it if you find that when you're using your axis, it's actually working the opposite of what it should be doing. You can also access what used to be called sensitivities in 2020 through the tweak action curve button and it'll bring you directly to that axis or the other option to see all of them is to click on hardware settings. The only thing to be aware of here is that the UI for this is currently broken. However, if you took those screenshots that we talked about earlier about all of your sensitivities from 2020, you can come back here and just set them exactly like you used to have them in the previous sim and it should work exactly the same. The next thing that I want to briefly talk about are duplicate bindings, and it's something that you're going to run into a lot, especially for the keyboard. So let's go back to that. If you have a look through the list, you're going to notice there are a lot of them that have a circle with a number in them, and that's actually there to tell you how many duplicate bindings you have for this key press. 
this isn't always necessarily a bad thing because there are some bindings that can coexist and not interfere with each other. But in some situations, it can cause you issues where two things start to happen at once when you press a single button. If you click on the gear icon of an entry that has a duplicate binding, say for example, like this one, you can see what those conflicts are right here and you can make a judgment call as to whether you think they're going to interfere with each other and if you want to remap or just remove the binding for one of them. If you decide that you want to remove that duplicate binding, it's actually super easy to do. You can click on this little arrow here and it's going to take you to that other binding. So all you have to do once you're here is now press the delete assign control. That's going to remove your binding. And when you go back, you can see that one of those bindings has now been removed and we only have one duplicate binding that we should probably get rid of as well. Now, one thing that this won't pick up are binding conflicts across devices. So the same action being done, for example, on a keyboard and on a controller, so it receives conflicting inputs. For example, the light switch that we bound earlier on the Bravo, when I have that in the on position and I press a key on the keyboard to turn them off, nothing's actually going to happen until I turn them off on the Bravo because of that conflict. That's not too bad, but you can also run into situations where the conflict can cause your plane to do some really weird stuff and it can be a little bit of a pain to debug. What you'll want to do for those situations is look across each one of your devices that's connected to see what's bound to that action and then if there's a conflict get rid of it there and then you should be good to go. If you learned something useful in this video please make sure to like the video and subscribe as well so that you don't miss out on the next one.